Sabrina Carpenter's sixth studio record and second big label album, Short and Sweet, is finally out. This record continues an amazing year for Carpenter that has seen her rise with three smash hits, one of which debuted at number one and the other being the de facto pop girl song of the summer. Short and Sweet marks a sonic evolution from her underrated record, Emails I Can't Send, where that record felt like a sampler of different sounds and subgenres. Short and Sweet leans even harder into that versatility. There's disco, R&B, country, and it all works. Short and Sweet is very true to its name. It spans 12 tracks. No song really goes over four minutes. The album itself is a breezy, repeat-friendly 36 or so minutes. Its title is also a very cute, clever reference to Carpenter's height. She is 4'11", a fun fact that she used to help market and launch the album announcement back in June. The rollout for this record has been immaculate so far. The cohesive messaging, the visual language that she's used really stands out. I adore the stunning light sky blue, the usage of the red lipstick kiss, and the different stunning covers for the album. It is archetypical pop girl iconography. Espresso marked the first single. She called it a little song before Coachella. It has become the song of the summer. A second single, Please Please Please, dropped in June. It was produced by Jack Antonoff. It marked her first number one, and the music video featured her on and off actor boyfriend, Barry Kogan. She would tease the album further by singing Slim Pickens at the Grammy Museum and Outside Lands. At the time of this video's recording, both singles are currently in the top 10. With Short and Sweet Out, she's going to tally more entries on the chart, starting with her newest single, Taste, which features Scream Queen Jenna Ortega on its cinematic music video. Before I dive into each track, I do want to talk about some general thoughts on the album. Overall, the album is excellent. One of my favorites upon first listen this year. It's everything that I wanted as a follow-up to email with some genuinely surprising twists. The album's storyline corresponds with the title having been about short relationships that have impacted Sabrina greatly. The project remains just as intimate as emails, but it feels bigger, larger than life. The production overall is varied. No single track feels the same. The single sounds so different. That really does key in that the album is designed to showcase her range. When Sabrina does country, she channels Dolly Parton vocally, Casey Musgraves lyrically with those biting lines. Slum Pickens was one of my most anticipated tracks and it delivered on all fronts. Coincidence is another country folk sounding track that relishes in its acoustic sound. It feels like a long lost track from another era with its fun call and response chorus. Where the country influence on emails felt like a slight feature, she goes full yeehaw on here. Another example of the pop girls going country this year, but a very well executed effort. A full country album down the line would be amazing. But the pop on this album is so well done. Pulling from the greats while retaining Carpenter's distinct vocals and penmanship. Espresso had evoked Olivia Newton-John, but then we get Bedchem, which is this loving tribute to Christina Aguilera, who was one of her first idols. Juno, a personal highlight of mine, felt like a love letter to early 2000s pop and early Kiss era Carly Rae Jepsen, at least for me. Sabrina's first and foremost a pop star. In spite of her talent in other genres, her decade-long career has molded her into a vessel for pop perfection. Good Graces feels like a send back to early Ariana, as well as her underrated Singular project. Everybody listen to Singular, please. As per usual, there are a few stripped back songs that let Sabrina shine beyond the production. Dumb and Poetic is a simple guitar back ballad that eviscerates her ex for their mushroom use and recklessness. Lie to Girls has this gorgeous guitar chord to it that is elevated by the vocal layering of Sabrina's delicate voice. I noticed that a few songs feel like evolutions of earlier works. Good Graces, a highlight of mine evokes Feather, but more r and Sharpest Tool felt like a more refined, up-tempo tornado warnings. Juno has been compared to nonsense in terms of its joyfulness. Sabrina made some comments about her old label and management wanting her to pick a lane. This album is a defiant and successful middle finger to that. I feel like the track listing works, but this record does slap and shuffle. I statement to this album. Emails really did have a start and an end that felt tied together. This one rather relies on the cohesion of her voice and lyricism to carry it. The lyric work I have to call out is much more improved. Sabrina goes all in on her emotions, the anger, the sass, the vulnerability, and also the horny. As per that gorgeous bridge on Juno, there's no shame in this record, very little restraint, and I think that's what makes it authentic. This has to be her funniest record yet. The one-liners are insane. Nothing feels like an attempt to be edgy for the sake of being edgy. Her team of writers and her really expand on their mastery of coming up with choruses and even verses that will stay stuck in your head. I cannot 
stop repeating this record because of how good it is, but also because it's very short. My issue is that the songs come and go so fast that you almost have to repeat them because you just miss them as soon as they end. I felt like some of the tracks ended a touch too early, the longer tracks like Sharpest Tool, Don't Smile and Juno, they felt the most fleshed out, and they don't overstay their welcome at all. I get that the streaming world demands shorter tracks, but Sabrina shines when she gets to play with the instrumentals and let the songs breathe. I would love to see a deluxe version down the line, I feel like these 12 tracks were perfectly curated, there's no skips on the record. I feel like this is going to be a road trip classic for some of you, you can just leave it on. In terms of what I think should be a single, I would love to see Good Graces, Bed Chem, and Juno get the radio push and video treatment, but honestly nearly any song could work on this record, which is the highest compliment that can give. Before we go any further, I want to shout out my sponsor Surfshark, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but Surfshark and their VPN services, you can browse privately and encrypt your internet activity all the while blocking ads and malware that get in your way and more. I'm a huge music fan, most of you guys are too. Sometimes I just can't wait until my favorite artists drop their new records on release day, I gotta listen early, but I just can't hop on a plane and go to an earlier time zone. That's where a VPN can come in handy. I just change the country I'm in to the one where the album is out already and boom, I'm already discovering my new favorite deep cuts. Surfshark does all of this while offering a level of security while you're online, it encrypts all of the information being sent from your devices to the web, that means all your passwords, all of your data, completely protected, and the best part is, you just need one Surfshark account, which you can use on all your devices. It's all covered. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so try it. If you want the hookup, use the code LJohn for an extra four free months. Visit surfshark.deal slash LJohn or use the QR code on the screen. So go give them a try and start surfing the web safely. Now back to Sabrina. And now I'm going to talk about the track by track. Taste is a perfect opener and the immediate single choice. It's a spun blend of disco and rock. Rock. The lyrics are raunchy at sharp. This is a savage track about her ex's new lover who will have to taste her too. Each verse paints this picture of how she's left an impression from her height to the new jokes being hers. The pre-chorus is just so petty. She's laying with her by one degree of separation. The chorus is trademark Sabrina Elegance, the rhyme scheme. You'll taste me too. Got a gasp out of me the first time. It's just a smash. It was co-produced with Ian Kirkpatrick. Dua Lipa's former go-to guy, co-written with Amy Allen and Julia. It really sets up the world, first short and sweet, while reminding you that this album's not for kids, it's very adult. The guitar riff actually reminded me of Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. Please, please, please slots into the album so well. I feel like it was a great second single, it coming after taste, but before it could grace this gives the listeners a smooth, sweet break between two giant pop bangers. Good Graces lets her do R&B just right. I had to double check that I was listening to the right album. It reminded me so much of her singular records, but more grown up. Many call this Feather's hotter older sister, and they're so right. This is a kiss-off anthem. I can see it being a smash. Fans of Ariana Grande's earlier discography will adore this. The melodic work on here is top-notch. The production kills. The vocals are everything to me. The verses are filthy and fierce. The line about finishing chores prematurely or saying that she'd move on with his favorite athlete. I was cracking up. This is so funny. The pre-chorus, chorus, post-chorus configuration on this is peak. The chorus has room to breathe with a repetition, but that post-chorus is arena ready. I won't give a fuck about you is going to be so much fun to chant with you guys. Highlight. Sharpest Tool is an Antonov production. You can really tell that Jack was having fun in the studio. This is one of his freshest productions this year. So many textures are used and Sabrina's voice is reimagined into an instrument towards the end. This song did remind me of Tornado Warnings. This track is about her knowing her ex wasn't the smartest guy. They had sex and she's even met his best friends, but a bird is enough to distract him. The pre-chorus itself is chorus worthy. She winds it up. Each last line of the verse builds a new line. I love seeing lines turn into lions to yourself. I'm a nerd for literary devices and the poetry here is great. I believe the refrain at the end, talking about finding God at the ex's house is a reference to her brief but unofficial stint with Shawn Mendes. I normally don't like talking about gossip on this channel, I like to focus on the music, but a good friend of mine pointed out that her love triangle with Shawn and Kamiya, all of them who have records out this year, uh, she told me a little bit about it and I feel like it's a cool story that adds context. Coincidence was a standout for me, I adore country folk and Carpenter 
Gallagher captures this so well. It's a Ryan Kirkpatrick production that feels like a throwback. But the lyrics really got me. The storytelling gives it a very classic feel. Verse 1 talks about how this ex has a sixth sense and comes back into her ex's life. Verse 2 has these burns, like this week you're holding space for her tongue in your mouth. The bridge has to be my favorite. Your car drove itself from LA to her thighs. Palm Springs looks nice, but who's by your side? The knives were out, and the ad libs in the chorus. This is a gorgeous track, go listen to it. Bed Cab lets her slip back into R&B, and it's just such a good throwback. The instrumental just feels so early 2000s with its synths. That slick guitar riff will stay in my mind. It's a loving tribute to Christina Aguilera. This track has to be 100% about Barry Kogan, the pre-chorus about the blue eyes, or the white jacket or the accent. It's a tribute to finding good chemistry. My favorite moments have to be within the second verse, Where Art Thou? Only Sabrina could make sex so Shakespearean and not sound corny. The outro is beautiful. She really gets to show off her vocals while harmonizing with the instrumental, and it's moments like these that make me wish the songs had lasted longer because then we get cool moments. Put this together with a fun music video and you have another number one, mark my words. Espresso in the context of the album is perfect. It continues the story in bed cam. The initial chemistry has evolved into utter confidence. I thought it was a perfect single for the summer. I still think it's the best lead she could have picked. Still my most played song this summer and the video really set up that storyline of going to jail, getting out, finding love, only to end up murdering again. Dumb and really good final takedown. Slim Pickens is proof that Antonoff is great when he's challenged to give something new. His country production here is immaculate, but anyone who has listened to the Chicks album that he did would know that. Carpenter's vocals are at their prettiest on this track. I think she's never sounded more gorgeous vocally. The lyric work on this one has to be my favorite. All the douchebags in my phone played like a slot machine. She just details different men that she has to settle for because all the good ones are dead or taken. So she's just back to serving up bitching and moaning. The one about the boy who doesn't know they're there and they are had me laughing as an English major. Best lines are the outro, since the Lord forgot my gay awakening had me rolling. She just laments being straight, it's iconic. Juno is a cheeky reference to the 2007 classic film about a pregnant woman in the song she imagines being so in love that she wouldn't mind having a baby. Juno also happens to be the goddess of marriage and families, a really clever double entendre. This funny pop track has so much innuendo in it, but it is the most romantic track on this record. You make me wanna make you fall in love is just so hooky. The chorus is an earworm. If you love me, right, who knows, I might let you make me Juno. The rhyme scheme is just right. And the bridge itself is my favorite one on this record. I'm a sucker for love songs and the escalation to I'm so fucking horny towards the end. It's young love at its finest. Stupid, but very real. If I do not see this used in a rom-com, Hollywood has failed us. Lie to Girls is the final Antonov track on the standard. It took me a few listens to appreciate, I will admit. It does feel like a track that would have been on the Legally Blonde soundtrack, and I do mean that as a compliment. The vocal layering on it is my favorite part. Listen to this one on headphones please. Verse 2 really helped me get the song. It really captures that theme that all girls will lie to themselves and confuse that anxiety for something more like butterflies. The lines about her mother feel like a reference to the emails I can't send opener and storyline. I like the meta structure of the song because the outro has this anxiety spiral feel to it as it resolves in an unfinished way to imply that the cycle just won't end. It is actually one of the darkest tracks on the record and it is going to become one of the more underrated deep cuts. The finale Don't Smile lands for Amarin, that level of sadness. I feel like it's a very honest closer it, where she really just drops this facade track listing literally, it juxtaposes taste. In the sense that she says that he's supposed to be thinking about her when he holds his new love. This one believes that the ex won't even remember her at all. It's this very groovy, one-sided, tragic ending to a situation. Overall, Short and Sweet has lived up to its hype. I think the rollout so far has been ingenious. Seeing Sabrina rise this year has been a real treat for me. This album for sure is going to raise the bar and carry her to a new level of stardom. The singles are great. The album is excellent. I think Carpenter is here to stay. She has risen. Not 9 out of 10, happy to give it that, and that's a wrap. I just want to thank my sponsors, thank you so much for supporting this video. I want to shout out my members, thank you guys for being there for me, for supporting me, and another shout out to my subscribers, whether you have been with me since I started this channel or you just joined today, I appreciate you so much. I will say I am going on a brief hiatus because I am traveling, but I will be back 
bigger than ever with something new that I'm excited to share with you guys. Leave a comment below letting me know what your favorite track off Short and Sweet was and your expectations for the era. What songs you want to get a music video out of? And if you didn't like the record, let me know. I do want to like see some other viewpoints. I can't wait to see you next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.